It's day 87, and despite the fact that I've made you build your own login systems, learning about sessions and all this stuff along the way, there was an easier way, which I'm going to show you today. So the nice thing about Replit is that we have a bunch of functions baked in. Replit is one of the best places to write code, to collaborate, and to publish your finished product. And when you're building a web service in Flask, it is very, very easy. You click run, and you share the URL with other users nice and simple. As well as that, Replit has authentication baked in and it's very, very simple. Let's pull it up. So pulling up the sidebar and clicking on authentication gives us this toolbar. Now, as long as you've clicked play at least once and your website is running, you'll see this big enable login button and turning on authentication is as easy as this. And we're done. You'll see on the loaded page on the right hand side there that there's a login popping up. So let's go and see what that's all about. In full screen mode, you'll see that in order to access any page on this website now, I need to log in with a Replit account, which hopefully most people have got anyway. I can authorize and it allows me to log in. Now nicely, what that means is I now have access to a bunch of information about the user from here. We need to bring in our request because it'll all be stored in the request header. And that means that once our user has logged in, let's make a bit more space. Once our user has accessed the page, I can simply use request.header and then this goes in the square brackets to access that. So instead of returning that, let's return an F string. When I run that and go full screen to the one I've already logged in with, you'll see my username now appears at the top of the page. And this is a great way of checking if a user has logged in. It does mean that every user needs to log into your site, but you can at least check to see if they are who they say they are. Now, that's about it for today because authentication is that easy on Replit. But what are common mistakes people make? Well, number one mistake and the one I keep making, of course, is that if you do this, it all looks right, and you run it, and then you get this. Now, the issue here is very simple. It is headers. What request does is it gets every request that your web browser has made to the web server. That's not only the stuff that we're putting in here, like the username and the user ID and all that sort of stuff that you can see on the left hand side, but it also includes things like which browser you're using when you made the request, which web page you came from, loads of stuff like that that are important for websites to function. So headers is what it is, plural and it works like a dictionary, so I can access all the stuff I need from there. The other major common error is that, unfortunately, the way it stands at the moment, when you turn it on, it protects every single page, which might not be what you want. Now, we're gonna look at how to fix that tomorrow, so hold your horses for a minute with that. But for now, they are all the common problems that you might see. Your challenge for today, then, is to go into the blog engine that you wrote yesterday I would like you to change your login button to simply forward them to the edit page. And on the edit page, I would like you to just check to see if they are you, and if they're not, kick them back to the main page. It should be significantly less code than you've used before. When you're done, of course, publish it in the community to share it with us. And if you're sharing it on social media, use the hashtag replit 100 days of code so we can find it and see all the cool work you're doing. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be looking at how we can use this a bit more subtly how we can put buttons in on their own so not every single page is protected, and how we can access more than just the username from the data.